In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to go from photographing and styling a sandwich like this to this. Roll that intro. What is up guys, welcome back to The Raw Factory. My name is Jacob and the goal of this channel is to help you become a better food and product photographer. Now today's tutorial is juicy. It's juicy sandwich juicy. I'm gonna show you guys how to photograph a sandwich and style it to make it look like this. Let's take a look at the setup. I have my sandwich sitting on a white block that I made myself. Video link below if you wanna make your own DIY blocks. I have a green sheet of paper that is stuck on the wall with some blue tack, nothing fancy. Both the blue tack and the paper can be bought from your local office works or paper supply store. And even if you can't do that, well, I'm sure you can find some stuff online, give it a quick Google search and see how you go. Next up, we have my light, which has a seven inch reflector as the modifier. This reflector contains the light. It narrows the beam of light directly onto my subject. That is why I chose it. Now attached to the seven inch reflector is a five degree honeycomb grid. This narrows the beam even more. If you decide on buying a seven inch reflector dish for your strobe or speed light, I do suggest buying the honeycomb grids because they do come in handy when you want to narrow that beam even more. So buy the honeycomb grids with the seven inch reflector just to make sure they all fit and life's good, life's good. Now onto the right side of my sandwich. You can see that I have a white bounce card that's bouncing light back into my sandwich, which will lighten up and lift the shadows. Now guys, keep in mind that you can use anything to lift up shadows as long as it's white. So a white suitcase, a white pizza box, a white anything, I don't care. As long as it's white, it's gonna reflect light back on the opposite side of the light. Moving on to my camera, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed that the camera angle is looking up to my sandwich. What do you think that is? Well, the reason for this is that when the camera is pointing up, looking to the subject, it actually makes the subject look bigger than what it is. Also, ensure that you place a mock sandwich, so one that you don't really need, or one that you just kind of put together in like two seconds, in frame, before you actually get to the real sandwich because what you want to do is practice on the dummy sandwich. You don't want to get the real sandwich and it's ready to go and you're like, oh shit, I've got to move this light here or I've got to put in a bounce card there because that might be the best looking sandwich that you ever made. But because it's been on set for like five minutes now, 10 minutes or whatever it is, the leaves have wilted, the sauce is oozing out and it's dripped all over the place. So make sure that you want it fresh and ready. So make sure you're lighting has been practiced, set up before the real shot. I think there's too much information in this one video. Maybe I shouldn't publish it. Maybe I shouldn't publish it. Good job to you if you're hanging around. All right, back to the video. Now, let's talk about styling the sandwich. I attempted to make the sandwich in the kitchen and put it on set and then photograph. But for some reason, after like, I think it was three goes of doing this, it just wasn't working. It just didn't, I don't know, it didn't have that like professional look to it. It looked like anyone could have made this and I don't know, it just didn't look fun. Then I had a light bulb moment. Why don't I style the sandwich on set? One layer at a time, and that's what I did. So that's the secret, guys. Put your bread on first, make that your base, get the sauce or whatever you're doing, whatever the first layer is, and focus on that. Take your shot, if it looks good, you move on to the next layer. If it looks good, you move on to the next layer, and the next, and the next. I'm not gonna lie, the rocket, that leafy stuff that's on top, that took ages to style, my goodness. But if you have a nice little tingy, tingy tweezer, whatever you call those things, I was gonna call it a tong, it's not a tong, instead of using your fingers, which mine are a bit chunky, you can actually get right in there and make some incremental moves, which is exactly what you need for good looking styling. Now, another thing to make things look fresh, I also spray it with this can that's called thermal spring water. That's this guy, that is this guy, that's this guy, thermal spring water. Really good, it kind of keeps everything fresh. And um, I mean, I've had this for ages. I have had this for so long. It's like 30 bucks, but worth it. You get some of this, guys. Get it, it's great. Just spray it when you're ready on set. Keeps everything alive, freshens things up. Marvelous product. All right, guys, well, that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got something out of it, like, comment, and subscribe to help other people find this video. And I will see you all in the next one. Remember, don't wait, make something creative today. Catch you guys.